All right, we are now recording video. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello everybody. How are you? All right, we'll put that down there. And we'll start our intro. And we'll get this show going. But it went. Talk she. Recorded live. GC Community Chat, show number 215. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to GC Community Chat. I'm your host, Kerry, and joining me tonight is Wayne County Commissioner Richard LeBlanc, yep. Dr. Tom Iwinski, yep. and Derek Parton. This <laughs> well. show is dedicated to you, the residents and businesses of Garden City, as well as the surrounding communities. Remember, we're working hard to promote our community and yours. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back for another episode of GC Community Chat. It's Thursday, September the 4th, 2014. Did you know that? Where is time gone? I'm not excited about fall. I dislike <laughs> fall. I love it. I love it. And we're going to be getting some fall weather, I think, next week, but time will fill Pre-winter. us in on that. Pre-winter, that's all it is. <laughs> all right, and you are listening to show number 215. Remember, no one is more committed to the businesses and residents than GC Community Chat. If you would like to promote your business, your organization, or just give a shout-out to your community, then GC Community Chat is here for you. We are all about promoting our community and yours. Well, Richard, last week uh, was so much fun and successful uh, with our Let It Rip show. We thought Let it what? Let it rip. Not rip. Let it fly. Fly. Oh, oh, oh. Oops, oops, oops. You're welcome. Oops. I don't yes. want us to get sued. Thank you. We, you know, we only have a couple million dollars in the bank account. <laughs> yeah, right. So, hey, we're, we're going to let it fly again uh, tonight, I think. All right. All right. I'm so, with you. And uh, look who's back. Uh, like I said, uh, who's participating tonight, co-host, yep. like our co-host, not. and Wayne County Commissioner Richard LeBlanc. Woo-hoo. How Everybody you doing? Clap. You doing all right? Doing good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we thought maybe Mike Jones would be here, but he's not here, so uh, maybe he'll come in later. He does that. And last but not least, our favorite resident weatherman, Mr. Tom Iwinski. Tom, how are you tonight? I'm doing good. Ready for that fall weather like you, but uh, uh, I want to... Oh, I love it. I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> I can wait. Hey, uh, I want to let everybody know that this will be our last show for two weeks. We are going on uh, hiatus, uh, but don't worry. We will be back on September 25th uh, with all new shows for you. Uh, but in the meantime, we invite you to visit our main show page at TalkShoe.com slash TC slash 82757 and check out all 215 shows. That's going to give you some time to get caught up on maybe some past shows you might have missed. And also visit us on our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash Community Chat Show. All right, on tonight's show, Let It Fly, uh, we get to talk about anything we want and uh, if you have a topic to discuss you're more than welcome to join in the conversation too. give us a call at 1724-444-7444 and enter the call id 82757 pound uh, some of you may have to call in more than once uh, due to the heavy traffic on talk shoe and we apologize in advance keep trying and we hope to talk to you soon or join us in our chat room, uh, once again, at TalkShoe.com. Just search for show ID 82757. That'll take you to our main show page. You're going to click on the large Join In button, sign in as a guest, and that takes you right to our chat room where you can type your questions or comments at the bottom of the page. If you would like to text us a question or comment, you can do that, too, at 734-788-9319. Okay, let's get uh, started uh, by first checking in with Mr. Tom Iwinski for the latest weather, and then we'll uh, go from there. Okay, let's do a check on weather with Doppler Tom. Let's see what he has in store for the rest of this week and the weekend coming up. Tom, take it away. Hey, Tom, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Uh, Put down this. I mean, after a pretty uh, pretty powerful little uh, rainstorm that moved through. Yeah, yeah it was. was. Uh, <laughs> 72 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I wasn't really thinking that we were going to get rain today, but I've seen it's really starting to develop. And uh, 
got a lot of rain out there. We got about a half an inch. We've seen a little bit of flooding on the roads, like we have seen all the last month, and now it's heading into this month. But the mm-hmm. good news is that it's starting to calm down, and I think the rest of the evening is going to be dry. But we uh, got pretty warm today. We got 86 degrees with all that humidity. It was a pretty unbearable day out there, but some people do like it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you do like that city, you will have one more day of it, so get out and enjoy it. Friday is a very hot and humid uh, day out there. I don't think the rain is going to be uh, a factor until we get into late in the evening, into mm. the overnight hours. So that's some good news. So if you have any outdoor plans, keep cool out there and enjoy it, because we're going to see uh, temperatures probably around 90 degrees, so enjoy it while it lasts. Wow. I do Love Richard, that. enjoy that. Love it. Of summer. <laughs> I really do think it's one of the last big gaps of summer. All because right. Because a big full front is moving through, um, and we're getting to Friday night, and the effects are going to be pretty fast as we get to the weekend. I do think the weekend's going to be pretty great out there. It'll be pretty dry, a lot of sun. Temperatures will be in the low 70s, no humidity, and those overnight temperatures will be in the 50s. So it's going to be a very uh, pleasant weekend out there if you have any outdoor plans. And it's going to continue into next week as well, especially early in the week with the nice weather. Uh, Monday we'll see temperatures again into the low to mid 70s. But as we get later into the uh, excuse me, later into the week, as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we'll see a little bit more cloud building into the afternoon hours, and those temperatures will try to warm up, but they're not going to do very well. We'll probably be in the mid to upper 70s for high hundreds as we get into the mid portion of the week. And then as we get into uh, the end of next week into the following weekend, I am seeing temperatures, for high temperatures, I am seeing 50 uh, for highs and 40s for lows. So if you like this fall weather, it's going to be coming in like a roller coaster and get to next week and into the following week. So that's a little bit of a uh, forecast for next week's show because we won't be on. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Richard is not happy. <laughs> Gaylord. <laughs> uh, yeah, there were just, uh, one tornadoes, which was winds between 100 and 110 miles per hour. There were three of those. And uh, one uh, EF0, which was winds around 80 miles per hour. They were on the ground for a few minutes uh, and uh, a few miles, but uh, they caused a lot of tree damage out there and some uh, property damage. So all we have to be prepared for severe weather, like I said, because any time of the year you can get it, uh, ingredients are right. So I just wanted to briefly mention that. And uh, talking about, uh, as I said, that cool weather, it's going to affect much of the country out there. It's a cold front moves uh, east, southeastward, all across the United States. And uh, I don't think frost is going to be a problem, but some places north of us, and especially across the central plains, will definitely wow. probably see potential frost out there. Really? So, uh, I wanted to briefly mention that. So if you have any of those late plants out there, you should uh, may have to get rid of them or cover them up if you could. They're really doing well. Wow. Speaking of cold weather... And uh, one of the most uh, northernmost uh, cities in the United States. So that's not pretty uncommon, but it's pretty interesting to see yeah, that much of a accumulation of snow this time of year. But the news, I don't see any snow in our forecast. And last but not least, the tropics are pretty much quiet out there, especially in the Atlantic. But the Pacific, so we have one system out there, it's Hurricane Norbit, and it's paralleling the Mexican coast right now. We'll probably see some rain and some high winds okay. all across the Baja of California. But, uh, as it uh, continues to move into cooler waters. It, but uh, the moisture from the system is going to go into the southwestern United States and increase the monsoon season. They're going to get a lot of rain out there. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think California is going to get uh, much rain out of this. They'll probably see some cloud cover, but not a lot of rain, and they definitely could use the rain out there. So that's not some good news for them. But uh, that's pretty much the weather out there. Um, enjoy the fall weather as we get to the next week and into the following week. Be cooling down. So that's yep. pretty much weather. 
if you want to keep trying to go to my website, downloadtownsweather.com. All right. Yeah, Cheryl already picked up her uh, her mums for fall. Oh, yeah, so yeah. She's good. What about a parka? <laughs> <laughs> you you might need your mums. Hoodie. <laughs> yeah, hoodie. <laughs> exactly. Hey, um, you know we're going to be going to North Carolina, Cape Hatteras, so uh, keep an eye on the Atlantic for us, please. We're going to. We're going to be leaving, um, I think, Tuesday, possibly Wednesday. So. On uh, the ninth or the tenth of next week, is that what you're saying? Yep. So, oh, I do think the Atlantic is going to be very, very quiet. I mean, there's so much dry air, dry air out there. There's nothing really out there to smell. But of course, I'll keep you posted. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yes, Sneezy is in the chat room. Uh, thank you for the early happy birthday. Yeah, you better believe it. I think I'm packing on some pounds with all these freebie meals. <laughs> I got two down uh, out of like six, I think, Richard. I don't know. Really? Yeah, yeah. Two of six. Plus, plus I got to get out to Frankenmuth the end of the month. I get my free meal out there and a free ornament from Bronner. So I highly suggest everybody to join everybody, these birthday clubs because it's well worth it. It really is. Cheaper to eat out anymore than, than eat in, you know what I mean? It's crazy. Stuff's really going up, man. You know what I mean? That's what I heard. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tom. Now let's uh, check in with uh, Joey and Holly and see what's new in gardening. Here's Joey and Holly. This is Gardening in Two Minutes. If you are fortunate enough to have an abundance of produce coming out of your garden and you're not quite certain what to do with it, here are some out-of-the-box ideals that may help solve that very fortunate problem you have. If you don't want to save in your produce and just eat it as you need it, then you can definitely donate to a local food pantry, food shelf, maybe there's something like that at your church. But before you just load your car up and take it in, you want to call ahead and make sure they do take those donations. Dehydrating is another form of saving the produce that you're getting out of your garden. Now you can purchase a dehydrator and or there are also wonderful recipes on how you can dehydrate inside your own oven. Right, so then you can also make baby food and many people don't realize that you can easily make baby food and then you can freeze it for three to five months. This can be done with a blender. You don't need anything fancy to do that with. If you have winter squash, for example, pumpkins or butternut squash or other varieties that can be stored very simply by putting it on a shelf, whether in your basement, crawl space, or root cellar, you can also store them in a cabinet away from the farthest heat source, and they will keep for several months based on the type of produce that it is. You can also do a lot of refrigerator food preserving. Depending on what you're putting in the refrigerator, it can stay good there for three to six months. Such things as refrigerator pickles, pickled beets, cucumbers, you can, you can pickle all those, freezer jam, and refrigerator. Many people also freeze items, and there are proper ways to freeze that. You can find that information online. For more ideals, our weekly video productions, as well as our free downloadable digital quarterly magazines, you can find all that information at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. For the organic, health-conscious gardener worldwide. For Gardening in Two Minutes, I'm Joey Baird. And I'm Holly Baird. All right. Thank you, Joey and Holly. Yeah, thank you. Very informative. Very. Yeah, I can't wait, Sneezy. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to try and do the Outer Banks. Um, we got some friends that live like 30 miles from there, so we're going to try and visit them. and should be fun. I'm sure Tom's going to give us some fabulous weather. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also want to let you know we're doing a video recording of tonight's show, so you can put a face with the voice, and that video will be available later on our YouTube channel, once again at youtube.com slash community chat show. All right, let's get right to it, and let's let it fly, Richard. Let it. How about, uh, let's talk about the budget. I see you guys uh, adopted or approved the budget for we did. Wayne County. Yeah, so the budget was approved unanimously, and I'm not sure the last time that happened. It's actually been wow. many years. Unanimous? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah, and, uh, you know, when when you have 15 different 
commissioners representing a whole host of different right. uh, interests and whatnot. That's and unusual, boy, desires. for everybody to agree. What, but what, you said there wasn't much change, so. You know, there really wasn't, but I, I have to acknowledge that I was asked, if it was a status quo budget, why did it increase? And it did increase. Yeah. But there's actually a really good reason for it. The state of Michigan in 2012 um, supported a new law, uh, enacted a new law, that affected uh, community mental health agencies. Mm -hmm. Wayne County used to have its mental health program in-house, so to speak. Okay. Administered in-house by county employees, et cetera, et cetera. And the state of Michigan decided they didn't like that, which was interesting. Okay. <laughs> so a bill sponsored by, well, there were a number of bills, but um, I'll call it uh, heralded by uh, State Representative Phil Kavanaugh made it through the process. Mm -hmm. I voted against it, but that's the way it goes. Yeah. And uh, so what it did, though, it, it changed the method by which mental health services can be provided within a county. Mm -hmm. What it did was take operating capital and cash flow out of the county oh. into this, and you know, that now rests with a, a separate entity. So it created shortfalls in a number of of uh, departments and oh. in a number of areas. So what the county pledged to do was to those departments, because it wasn't everything they did. It was, you know, I, I'm saying nickel and dime. It wasn't. It was a lot more money than that. But uh -huh. where money was uh, lost because of that state law, the county pledged to make it whole. Mm -hmm. So while there were increases overall, no department got a significant increase in, in any fashion. It was really a status quo budget. Mm -hmm. But, again, it passed unanimously. We also literally, literally, that same day, were able to avoid a protracted lawsuit with the office of the prosecutor. She had sued Wayne County for additional money. It was an ongoing litigation. Hold it now. The prosecutor sued Wayne County? Yeah. Okay, for more money. <laughs> Okay. The sheriff is currently suing the county. Okay. So, oh. but the prosecutor and the county came to terms literally that day. We approved a, a separate item mm -hmm. that would say the lawsuit goes away in exchange for a modest amount of money. Okay. With the proviso that the, the prosecutor would not sue regarding that particular budget because Let's face it, if the county is suing the county, the county pays. Right. And the county pays both sides of it. Yeah. Taxpayers lose. Exactly. It's so not a win for us. It was in our best interest, in my opinion. Right. Uh, that had one dissenting vote, that particular item. But overall, the budget uh, included that, received unanimous support. I think that you'll see um, no, no meaningful change of any sort with one exception. The one exception being because of our property tax situation and the collection efforts having been enhanced, uh -huh. we have eliminated to, um, I'm going to say, a little bit more than 50 percent the structural deficit, uh, rather the, the accumulated deficit. Wow. So we paid $100 million on that deficit. So That's I good. can legitimately say, as well as other people, it's better this year than it was last year, yeah. 100 million bucks. Absolutely. So. Uh, but, you know, the average person will never see that. No. It but, does reflect in our bond ratings and things of that nature. Uh -huh. But uh, So, yeah, it was really kind of boring, which is okay. <laughs> yeah, no fireworks or nothing really. There really wasn't. Speak you know, of. there was just a couple of things that were desired. What about um, county roads? Anything there? Um, no, nothing meaningful, again, in any, in any area. The county, with all of the money that it, it is able to collect, mm -hmm. it is able to expend, uh, somebody mentioned the the miles, but I, and I, I would ask to not be held to this, but somebody said uh, if you were to put it all together, the amount of work that can be accomplished in one year mm. in Wayne County, and we all know how big that is. Oh, yeah, it's huge. You're talking 35 miles of two-lane uh, pavement. 35 miles. Yeah. So, hmm. you know, mostly what the county does is try to keep up. Yeah. And we've had... It, it, it's not a secret to anybody. We've had a year and a half worth of really difficult environmental, when I say the environment, I mean like weather yeah. issues that have really Related. created havoc with our roads, really our infrastructure. Yeah. You know, there's just a lot of difficulty. We, I also heard 
Last week, I had a conversation with our roads director who told me that the price of rock salt this year, this yeah. winter, will double. Are you serious? Double. So we can expect that either we're going to buy half as much or we're going to. And Detroit's sitting on a salt mine. <laughs> yeah, isn't that interesting? But we don't <laughs> that, get our salt from there. No. So no, I know. That's so weird. Yeah, so there's a number of factors that will come into play. Our hope is that uh, with a, a new incoming executive, I mean, that is a fact. There will be a new executive on January yep. 1st yep. with a status quo budget, largely, with uh, a status quo commission. I mean, there's going to be a couple of changes, really, but nothing significant mm -hmm. in terms of uh, existing leadership. My hope is that we have a calm year because we yep. can't afford – too much of this stuff where last year we blew all the budgets out of the water in terms of road maintenance. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't know what Doppler Tom is saying, but some folks are squawking yeah. that you can expect it to be worse this year than last year. I, I don't uh, know how they predict that. Yeah, I know. The but, Farmer's Almanac, I, you know, yeah. I wait till Tom gives his prediction. <laughs> and I wait till I wake up and look out the window. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I don't even watch the news. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, again, I, I'm glad you brought the budget up. It was interesting that it received unanimous support. That was probably um, due to a number of factors, but including that there was there was no huge wish list of any sort. Mm -hmm. What about? Um, I got to tell you, we went to Mongolian barbecue yeah, for I saw dinner. That. Yeah, out in Canton, the yeah. one in Canton. I looked for my styrofoam package so, when I walked so, in here. So. Ford Road in Newburgh was closed because yeah. of a horrendous accident. Right. It's open now. They just Yeah, it's it. open. And then so we took Cherry Hill, and Cherry Hill's no better because Cherry Hill and Newburgh is right. a gridlock. Right. When, any About another month. An another month? Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and uh, I try to avoid that intersection unless it's It's like tough to get to well Canton if you hang out to go there, for God's sake. Yeah. So what I typically you know, do when, is take Palmer because uh, I'm sharing yeah, the secret here. But yeah. taking Palmer... The speed limit's less, but the time is far less. Mm -hmm. And, but uh, night before last, it was about 9 p.m. And I figured, you know, there's less traffic then. So I came right. home from my son's house in Canton on Cherry Hill. Okay. I haven't been down there in a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, they've got all but the center lane done. Yeah, yeah it looks pretty good. Concrete. Yeah, they got a lot so done. So they've moved very quickly. Uh-huh. And I think the original proposal was right around, you know, the first week of October. And now is this so, concrete warranted too now, like they've been talking for the roads when they, when they put, put it in, it's 20 years or 25 years or whatever. Are they doing that? Do I really know? can't speak to that. Yeah. I know that, uh, you know, whatever provisions are standard. Because I know 96 is supposed to be warranted like that from what I hear. 25 years? Yeah, 20 years. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, I think so. Well, it I mean, is that's a heavily traveled talking. intersection, but let's face it, it's not going to have four zillion cars I don't know. go down it. But anyway, at least they're going to, what I'm saying, getting at, is they're going to hold these contractors responsible for these roads. I think there's more scrutiny today than there's ever been. Yeah. And it's easier to complain and provide proof today than yeah. it's ever And then been. rather related, too. I mean, that yeah. plays hell on the roads. It's all it's it terrible. Does. Yeah. So. It does. All right, so let's move on. Uh, let's talk about um, what's this charter amendment now that uh, yeah, it's actually pretty simple. Going to be it's, on the it's something that requires a vote of the electorate, mm -hmm. and what the amendment does is to fix what is a technical flaw, in my opinion, in the charter. Mm -hmm. The charter today recognizes that we have a retirement board, a county retirement system board. Right. It's comprised of various people that are placed there in various ways through the charter. Mm -hmm. The county executive is allowed to be seated as a member of that board or to designate someone in his or her place. The chairman of the Wayne County Commission does not have that same option. It's got to be the chairman. Uh -huh. So in this instance, the chairman came to the commission and said, look, I'm not a retirement specialist. Just because I'm chairman doesn't mean I know everything about investment and right. you know, good yeah. retirement policy. Right. So I would wish that the Wayne County had... Wayne County Commission had that same option. So all this does, and nothing more, is say, is add a few words to say that the Wayne County Commission chairman can also designate a person in his or her place okay. to sit on that board. Who is the chairman? Gary Warren Chuck. Okay. Gary is uh, from Allen Park. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it, it was Gary's suggestion that we do it, and I agree with yeah, it. Yeah, it makes sense. 
Yeah. yeah I, absolutely. I would rather have somebody that knows the ins and outs than yeah. someone who right. was fortunate enough to become selected yeah. as the chairman of a public body. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need somebody that knows the numbers there. Um, also, I wanted to bring up this um, Western Wayne Business Leadership yeah. Banquet that's coming yeah. up. Uh, we were talking earlier, uh, Cheryl, my wife, had initiated an email mm-hmm. um, to the mayor and the city council and I think Kim Dole, the DDA or whatever, and the only one that responded was Jay Lee Lynch because we had never heard of this. Uh, nobody, they, Nobody's ever mentioned it at any meetings or anything. I think it was the first one last year, right? This yes. is the second one? Right. And we didn't know who was representing Garden City. Mm-hmm. Garden City is one of the 18, I think, communities or cities invited. Um, and we found out that Jay Lee represented us last year. And she more or less said that it really didn't pertain much to Garden City because they were looking for large areas of real estate to come into you know the communities, which we disagreed. I mean, we thought, why can't it be small? too you know what i mean i mean what's your thoughts on that so i was invited to join uh some folks at a table at the inaugural event last year and i Mm -hmm. said sure i'd be glad to be your guest and go i thank you for the invitation Mm -hmm. i have to admit i was to um paraphrase the former governor i was blown away this was one of the more impressive events like this i have ever attended Mm -hmm. and it was the inaugural event this newspaper article that you showed me today, and by yeah. the way, I haven't been invited to this next one, but I will be, mm-hmm. and I hope to attend. Okay. This article says there were about 350 people there. I, I think that's a gross underestimate. Really? Seriously. Wow. It was fabulous. There was an opportunity to meet a lot of movers and shakers, people that are really in the trenches doing the work, uh, building relationships, making things happen, hiring people. You know, this is all about engaging a community in uh, efforts uh, involving jobs, involving investment, involving improvement. So our representative, whoever goes this year, really needs to get in there and do some networking with these companies and and everybody, right? I mean, here's the deal. We have no chamber here. We have nobody speaking for us. we got to rely on her or whoever represents us or the Garden City Business Alliance now. So... For her to to tell us that it really doesn't pertain to Garden City, I, I take exception to that. I really do. Yeah, I, I can't speak to that other than to say that I believe. You, you, you think it's a great thing, right? I believe that everybody, without exception, at least the folks that I talked to that attended last year, mm-hmm. said, wow, this is this is great. I, it's hard it's hard to figure whether. But all size cities event, were there, right? I mean. Oh, I, yeah. There was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't recall that there was mention of a, you know, size of geography or anything like that. It was Western Wayne. Well, this is the impression she was giving us, so. Yeah, and, you know, maybe it was something that was mentioned to her. I, I can't say, but I, I would suggest this. Uh-huh. Whomever goes to this this year, mm-hmm. bring about 200 business cards. Right. And make sure that you shake a hand, look them in the eye, hand them a card, and follow up with a message working. the next day. Right. Uh, but, you know, if you've got an interest in having people locate in the community with a business, mm-hmm. investing in the community. I mean, this is an opportunity for, for us to showcase us, all communities, yeah, right? It's really good. I'll tell you how good it was. Last year, the, there was a keynote speaker, one of the Ford vice presidents. Mm-hmm. I was so impressed with it, I asked for a copy of the DVD that was recording him. Really? I then shared that. Uh, not only with my sons, but uh. with another group of people that are young adults, that because the message was was really, it was spot on in terms of what it takes not only to get hired, but to stay employed. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about a, an entry-level job at entry-level pay. I'm talking about in a professional environment. Right. Not to suggest that all jobs aren't important. I'm not saying that, but that's the focus of this. And they were talking about what it takes today, it's different than when I was 25 years old, for oh, example. Oh, yeah, and really different. I, I think it was just a really, really good message, especially for this audience. Yeah. And um, Would that be something you'd be willing to share with the Garden City Business Alliance? Share what? That DVD, that speech? If I, mean, I still have it. I have to acknowledge I probably gave it away, seriously, okay. because... Okay. 
you know, I don't collect that stuff. Right. I want I want people to get the same message or access to it that I had. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, if by chance I have it, of course I would do that. Yeah, I'd, but that'd be something great. Uh, to... You know, and the person that uh, alerted me to this last year was Dan West, who is the chamber director for the city of Livonia, mm-hmm. and that's how I became aware of it. And they're doing some fabulous things within that chamber. Hey, and they're going to have uh, Snyder's going to be speaking. Did you see that? that I did. He's going to be speaking yeah. to Livonia, Farmington, yeah. Farmington Hills. The tech, yeah. And the chamber got him to do that. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So this, these are people who want to make money. Yeah. They want to provide jobs. Well, that's what we they want, want to do. to invest. We want to do that here. And <laughs> I'm talking about, look. We want to reinvent us. The Ford vice president, you know, there's there's a handful of them. Mm-hmm. These are powerful people, all the way down to a guy like me, just some local guy, and mm-hmm. everybody in between. And it was really, really good. Wow. I, I'm I'm really pleased that we're talking about this today because first yeah. of all, I put it on my calendar. Right. Uh, secondly, I would encourage uh, those who have an interest in sharing their message very briefly and moving on to the next person because this the pre-event is mm-hmm. as important as the event itself. The pre-event, which is about 45 minutes to an hour, mm-hmm. is where I saw a lot of friends that I had from within the legislature. I don't mean legislators. I mean business people and whatnot. Right, I, right. I saw a lot of familiar faces. I met a lot of new folks. It was all good, all of it. Well, whoever represents Garden City this year, I hope, like you said, they take a, yeah. a lot of business cards and they yeah, and they really too. showcase, you know, our community too. You know, I mean, even though we're small, we can be mighty too. You know, and uh, yeah, there's there's great. I think Kim Dole's going for the good, DDA, good. which is a uh, is a plus. Yeah, so, um, you know, I just all right. Yeah, we're. It just wasn't the message that we wanted to hear at the time. So, Well, that takes care of, uh, let's see, page A7. We've talked about everything <laughs> on page A7. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to ask you some say questions. About page eight. And I don't yeah. know if we brought this up before, but um, what would it take to get a historical sign for the Garden City Historical Museum, the farmhouse over there? Yes. Yeah, so what, ta- what do we have to do? I talked with a gentleman that we both know. Okay, yeah, Mike Lawrence? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't going to. I thought I would bring it up. Hi, Mike. So (laughs) he he listens. I don't know if he's in there, but yeah, he he listens. So Mike and and I talked at the ice cream social here two weeks ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, the process for that is really, it involves the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it is a property that is owned by the city, it's a city property. Mm -hmm. It, in order to receive this historical designation, the owner has to make a request. It's very formal. The owner has to be willing to provide documentation and proof when asked. But okay. the process begins with whom, whomever owns the property yeah. making a formal request. To the state? To the state. And then it takes quite a while. So could we get, like, David involved in that, possibly? Uh, I don't know that that would be as good as just following the regular channels, but, but possibly. Okay. I mean, you know, if there's... If somebody from within the city says, I want you to do it for us, probably not. If they say, we hit a roadblock, absolutely yes. So maybe 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 city manager internet. Mary could get involved? Well, it, it was my suggestion to Mike that Talk to him. the folks that are the friends group or whatever it is that's in place right. uh, there, they need to make a formal request of the city. Of course, that would go through the city manager's office and the clerk's office. Okay. It then may come to the city council for consideration, or maybe it won't. But at some point, the legislative body, in my opinion, should be involved. Yeah, good. right. I, I agree. Uh, and but, but but it has to start with You, you just orders. wouldn't think it would be such a big deal, you know what I mean? But it is a big deal because it's a big deal when you get it. It's a big deal, yeah. right, for them. But I'm, as far as, you know, all the hoops you got to jump through to get it. Yeah, I don't I, know that it's as much hoops as it is Well, hopefully it's not. <clears throat> right. So. so, I mean, you can have a house that is a couple hundred years old. Well, they have the Henry Ford honeymoon cottage there. Right. They did I that. Came yeah. But you may not want that designation. Because there are certain restrictions that come yeah. along with that. Yeah. And so not everybody likes this. But well, communities should, especially if they have an investment. Yeah. So if the community has that as an interest, based upon the wish of the, the board or the friends group. Or right, the city right. Council yeah, they have a board whatever, there. Yeah. Then, 
you know, they should uh, they take could that, begin that process. As a board, they should probably take that request to to Chief or right. City Manager Murray. They should they should go put it on one there. of their agendas. They should uh, deliberate, yeah. vote, yeah. perhaps. Okay. And then if that vote results in a an affirmative request, send it to the city and yeah. let the city do with it what they would wish. Okay. All right, Mike. I hope that helps. Also, Mike. Another situation. I got to tell you this. This is this is beautiful. You're gonna love this. We're ragging on the county, county tonight, but this is stuff you need to know. This isn't about the tree, is it? Yes, you know about that tree, I right? Do. I do. That is a hazard. You know, you've seen it. It's bad. It's Notice pretty bad. Notice my silence. Yeah, it hangs right over the one of the. It covers an entire lane on Middlebelt in front of his house, and it is marked with an X. Supposed to be taken down. They still haven't taken it down. We were in Chipchuana last week or whatever when Sorry that big when when that storm hit, yeah. and a big branch, I mean a big branch, broke and fell across the city sidewalk. So he took it, he cleaned it up, and he put it on the county side, and he called the county and he says, <laughs> "This branch, can you come out and get it?" Right. Yeah, no problem. We'll come out and get it. So I guess it was a few days later, and they sent. He's not exaggerating. Three trucks, nine guys with the wood chippers, and all they did was remove that branch. They didn't do anything about the tree. So they're still saying they'll get to it when they get to it. I guess this is what they told you, too, from what I understand. Essentially. I mean, they didn't put so, it quite that way. I don't know if you can put any more muscle on them or not, but... I mean, yeah. it's it's a hazard. It really yeah, is. You know, and but to send that many trucks and guys out and... Well, there are, there are a couple of things at play. <laughs> One of them may be contractual. Yeah. I really don't know the collective bargaining agreement. Yeah, I don't know. Another may be uh, the perceived level of work. Maybe it wasn't communicated to the to the team from whomever might contacted uh, you know properly. I, I have no idea. Right, what I do right. know is this: yeah. if there were a bunch of logs sitting there and there were nine people picking them up, that's overkill. That's <laughs> yeah. not efficient. No, it isn't. That is not efficient, and, and that's what we were saying. Right, and uh, that's a problem. Yeah. But sometimes the problem may lie with those who transcribed it from Mike to whomever. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not making excuses. And then that's by the time the they did come and get it, I guess a lot of the neighbors had taken the wood, you know, sure, for, for yeah. their personal use. Right. So they didn't even have that much to take. Yeah. There, <laughs> there are other portions of the 12th district that but, have tree issues as well. And we have really had a difficult time with the cutback. I mean, let's face it, there are, well, I was going to say a couple thousand, but I know that there are many, many hundreds of less employees than there were 10 years ago. But right. there's no less workload. In the forestry division. Yeah, and, and there's no less workload. There's more emphasis. There's more demand. So, yeah. I mean, things are just tough. And so they're going to respond to an emergency or what's perceived to be an emergency first. Yeah. It's just, you know. It's no different is, than triage, you know, whether it's in a police department or in a medical room. But that you is guys, such a, that's an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. It's just well, really it preventative, yeah, really, sure. you know. So, yeah, it's just too bad that, yeah. I don't know. All right. So, Can we okay. get off Wayne County now? What else we got? Yeah, moving on. No, I got another county. <laughs> <laughs> that's and fine. this this doesn't Bring pertain us much here in our area, but this is uh, uh, about the Ram's Horn in Livonia. Yeah. Uh, I just yeah. wanted to know your thoughts on yeah. that. What happened there was, I guess he wanted to rebuild. Livonia was all on board until the county got involved. And I guess they want, they insisted on a lot more requirements, which would have cost him $350,000 more. Oh, he's I got the, see that. Yeah, he's got, the, he's got the property listed for sale now at 329000 So. Well, he okay, just said so, it would have been too expensive. So here's what's happened, and I think why you're asking it. Mm -hmm. So this morning, when I was at the Guardian Building downtown, uh, waiting for my first meeting, mm -hmm. I got online to look at the Observer, and I saw that article, and it piqued my curiosity. So I, yeah. I read it, and I found it to be very contradictory from within itself. So I posted it online. There have been a number of comments posted to it, and I've asked Jay in my office to make an inquiry. So... What, uh, to paraphrase what it says in the article is, the restaurant burned down a year ago. Right. While Eight looking mile toward, While looking toward rebuilding it, apparently it was learned that uh, there's due revised or 
created or whatever regulations, and it's cost prohibitive now to rebuild the ram's horn. Mm -hmm. In the next sentence, the guy says, the city of Livonia was great to work with, but county yeah. is lousy, so we might end up putting a restaurant on that site. Well, that makes no and sense to me And he wanted to, to put state-of-the-art restaurant, he said. I think he yeah, quoted it. That makes too. no sense to me. So yeah. one person that responded on my, web, um, on my Facebook page uh -huh. said it could very well be stormwater retention. Those rules have changed across the country, by the way, uh -huh. not just in Wayne County. Yeah. And another person followed that up, a person that's the treasurer in Canton, a friend of mine, Melissa, and she said that she agrees that that, that could very well be the issue. Okay. Now, think about what's happened over the past month mm -hmm. in With terms all the rain. of stormwater mm -hmm. and rain. And, you know, our methods are not always perfect, mm -hmm. as evidenced by those that live in Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, you know, parts of Macomb oh, yeah. County, et cetera. Right, right. So, you know, the rules do change and they may be different than they once were and folks that are grandfathered in may, maybe you know that's just the way it goes but yeah we're still trying to figure it out i mean i just i signed this to jay at nine o'clock this morning we'll see what happens it was a very very busy day downtown today yeah and he had other things to do but we began the process of trying to figure out number one is it true what this guy is saying yeah. Uh, and if it is. Who's the commissioner for Livonia there? Do you know? Yes. It's not that's you. Laura Cox. And oh, I went Laura to Cox. Her. I went to her with it. I said, hey, I just right, want to let Laura you know Cox. that I, I posted something about your yeah. town. And she said, I have the same question. Yeah. Because the restaurant owner is saying, well, we can't, we can't build the ram's horn there, but we might build a restaurant there. Okay. So what's wrong with this picture? Well, I read where he, he's, does, he's got that property up for sale for 329000 Yeah. But that doesn't rule out Livonia, that he may build another restaurant elsewhere in Livonia. He's no, if looking. you read that article again, it actually says, regarding that site, uh -huh. it says... Yeah, I don't have it up. The, it says the, the um, Ram's Horn restaurant, you know, would be too costly to build, so we might put a restaurant on that site. Uh -huh. Well, either it was quoted incorrectly, written incorrectly, or there's something fishy. Yeah, I don't have it here right so, now. Yeah, that is. That's odd. So it we're is. looking at it. Yeah, but I just thought that was kind of interesting, you know. It is. I agree. You know, blaming the county again. <laughs> well, a, you know what? Pile this time on. it wasn't the city, it was the county. Wow. But, hey, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. It, it, but I'm sure a lot of things have changed, you know, since that's burnt down, you know. I mean, well, since, I he since, burnt down, since he built last time. Since he built last time. Maybe since original construction. Right, original construction, absolutely. You know, it's like electrical codes. I mean, do, oh. you, want, do you want a, a oh, plumbing, electrical, all that. to a two-by-four on the wall? Right, yeah. Uh, no, exactly. of course you don't. No, you got to, you got to, yeah, you got to go by the rules for sure. So I'm, I'm going to read part of this. Okay, you got Because I do. I have the part that I was talking about. So what the article says is costs associated with constructing a new building, mm -hmm. including new re requirements imposed by Wayne County, right. were too great to reopen a restaurant at that site, the owner said. The city of Livonia was absolutely in our ballpark. Then mm -hmm. the county got involved and it created a lot of problems with the property. Right. Later in the article it says the owner said they're looking to possibly construct another business at that site Perhaps a restaurant. Oh, okay, at that site. Yeah, so yeah, that I makes mean, no on. sense. Yeah, something's going on. Right, right. And we'll see what we can. But uh, so three people on here now uh, are indicating <laughs> stormwater requirements is what the guess okay, is. Okay, so that would be costly. I in mean, in fact, the economic development three hundred fifty thousand though. Wow. Said that uh, you know that requirement has killed several projects in Westland. Oh, so, okay. So we'll see. But hey. You got to do something. I mean, our infrastructure now is just pff, shit. Hey, we're live radio. <laughs> Beep. We can do that. <laughs> we can do that on here. <laughs> well, but really, I mean, it is. Challenges, but it's costly as heck. Yes, that's uh, the thing. In the end, if if somebody chooses to invest. They don't invest unless there can be a profit. Apparently, in this case, maybe there can't be with these requirements. So right. we'll have to see. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And what then, other county business you got for me? Uh, that's it on county business. Really? Hey, Joan Rivers died. Yeah, I heard. 81. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't think we're going to know all the facts, but 
You know, she's had a lot, a lot of surgeries, man. Really? Oh, my God. I know the Joker was going to sue just... her for, for facial infringement. <laughs> Is that what it was? But, uh, yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, I don't know. Something about her vocal cords or something, and she had problems there, but that's too bad, you know. It is. We lost a lot of a lot of good people, boy, lately. Geez, Robin Williams there and has been her. Been a run. Been a run. Been a run. Um, let's see, Tom. You got anything you want to talk about tonight? Let's get you in on it. Tom, you there? Oh, he must have nodded off. He's still on the phone, though. I see his phone there, unless he uh, signed out and I didn't see it. Okay. All right. So anyway, uh, moving on. Um, have you checked out the new website that we got for the Garden City Business Alliance? No, I haven't. You need to check it out. I'll do that. Uh, you can go to gcbiz, B-I-Z, 48135.org. Or you can spell it out, Garden City Business Alliance at dot org. <laughs> but anyway, it's really We'll be nice. better prepared for the next show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can go to gcbiz48135 dot org and check it out. And this was all done by uh, Rick Palmer. We talked about this last week a little bit. And uh, he had seen our article in the Observer, and he wanted to do get involved, and and he's f- did the domain for us, the right. website, and everything, all free of charge. And uh, yeah, Garden City Business Alliance dot org, that's the other site if you want to go to it that way. But anyway, we're real happy with it, and um, things are looking good. People are interested. We have an agenda for uh, September twelfth meeting. That is going to be uh, at 9 a.m. September the 12th at Serpro, uh over there on 38156 Warren Road. That's east of Hicks and Westland. And then we're going to have an evening meeting October the 3rd. I don't know if you put that on your calendar, but we'd like you to come to at least one of these if you can. Yep. October 3rd at Party Animal Travel, 6561 Middle Belt Road at 6 p.m. start. And... Uh, We'll discuss a few things there as well. And then in November, we're going to be uh, over at the Grand Parlor at the Straight Farmhouse, the museum over there. They've uh, given us the uh, the Grand Parlor every month free for a year. So that's located at 6221 Merriman Road. So time to be announced. You know, that's another thing I want to mention. Um, the Straight Farmhouse, they have a, a real nice Grand Parlor over there. Um, if you have a, a baby shower, a wedding shower, small wedding shower, any kind of, you know, I've maybe, been there for parties. maybe a business meeting or something. I think yeah. they hold up to Surprise 60 parties. people. Yeah, anything. You know, they're looking for, for some people to, uh, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, they're looking for people to, uh, you know, go ahead and reserve it. Uh, it's available. Uh, you can give them a call over there. Uh, let me get you the number. I got it right here. Uh, I thought I did. Oh, I don't have the number. Do I have the number? But anyway, they're looking for people over there. If you want to uh, reserve it, they'd be more than happy to do that for you. Okay, their phone number is 734-838-0650. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place, and they will help you out over there if you need a place to have a surprise party or something like that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hey, Garden City Business Alliance is always looking for new members. So if you're interested, uh, get a hold of us um, at gcbusinessalliance at gmail.com. All right. Anything else you want to cover? Let's let it fly, man. Let's do that. That sounds good to me. That's a big deal, man. Make a senior smile. Yep. As we've talked about uh, in past shows, and we'll continue to talk about until the November. first week of November. <laughs> Make a senior smile is on November 8th. That's a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Meet at the Maplewood Center at 8 o'clock. 
enjoy a continental breakfast with hopefully about 150 of your closest friends and family. Yeah, more of the better. We'll send you out to a uh, location where you can rake the lid, rake the lid, rake the <laughs> leaves. You'll be better prepared. I'm reading next my text time. messages. <laughs> Break the leaves of a uh, senior who needs that done. Yep. We'll get you back into the Maplewood Center at noon for a pizza lunch. It's a lot and, of fun. And uh, so you get, let's see, you get coffee and donuts, you yeah. get a shirt, you get to rake a lawn, then you get some pizza, and we're not paying you. No. Nope. So. That's plenty enough payment. Hey, payment, just helping out the seniors, yeah. man, that's enough, really. It's very cool. So it actually, is. Jay and I talked about this in the office today. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking him to send formal uh, letters to those who we have addresses for who participated last year. Uh -huh. I need for folks that have an interest in doing this to notify our office that, yes, I want to volunteer. I think we did already. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. Uh, some others did as well. Uh -huh. But we're about 140 folks shy so far. Oh, wow. So, yeah. you know, we've got a little bit of time. But Get on the I'm phone. asking folks to call us at 313 Two two four eight eight five five, or email us at district12 at waynecounty.com. That's district12 at waynecounty.com or 313-224-8855. Leave a message. We need to know a couple of things. One, if you wish to volunteer. Two, mm -hmm. if you wish to volunteer and you got some folks that you might be bringing with you, family members or friends, Right. Three, if you're interested at all in sponsoring any portion of this, this is not a fundraiser. This is not to have money in the bank. But no, let me say that this is all coming out of your pocket. Yeah. So, you know, any any yeah. monetary money is, is so, welcome for so sure. So we do have a couple of folks, uh, uh, Councilwoman from Dearborn Heights, Lisa Hicks-Clayton. Yep, you got it. Is donating toward the breakfast as awesome. well as Mary Ribeiro from Seniors Helping Seniors. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, breakfast. Every little bit helps. we got to buy some shirts and uh, some lunch. Lowe's is going to be a, a big-time sponsor with rakes, volunteers. Yeah, they and, send some people out there, too. And uh, bags. Leaf bags. Yeah, so. Uh, it's, it's a fun time. It really it is. is. If the weather is really nice, too. I mean, last year it was just beautiful out there. It really was. But we're doing it. Yeah. Rain or shine. Oh, the yeah. only thing that will prevent us from doing it is a half foot of snow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and then you never we'll know. Just, we'll go there, we'll have breakfast, hang around for a while, and have lunch. Now, you already have the uh, the homes are all set, all right? Uh, we have most of the homes. We're still we working want. on that. We'd like to get a handful more. Okay. Yeah, so if you know of anybody that needs assistance there, we yeah, have disabled a couple or anything. Yeah. That awesome. is a struggle then. We're going to be limiting ourselves uh, to probably, beyond what we had last year, probably five, you know, five or six more houses. So we'll have, uh, you know, be like 30, 20, 25, so 30, yeah. Total. Yeah. Uh, but as you know, when you get three, four, five people on the yard, it's done. Fast. Oh, yeah, it doesn't take long. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's an early start, 8 a.m. or something, right? Well, it's when we're going to go there and have coffee and donuts. i got to right. have coffee in the morning. Right. Oh, I do yeah. too. Yeah, yeah so, don't even talk to me. Uh, but we're hoping to get everybody <laughs> pushed out the door by 9. Yeah, and you're done by noon, 1 o'clock? Most folks were done by 10.30 yeah. last time. So just come back and to the community. And we have called pizza guys and tell them to push it up, get here, get here faster. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, but it is. It's a fun time. And once again, if you you know, you know want to volunteer, you want to donate money, uh, you're more than welcome. We It yep. will be appreciated. L amounts large or small, and, uh, again, there's no bank account. Any I'm not, denomination, I'm not anything. Uh, keeping anything. If if we end up with an extra $20, well, we might get uh, mushrooms on one of the pizza, too, you know. So, <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, right. <laughs> extra cheese. Yeah. <laughs> and we do, I do have some things uh, left over from last year. I've probably got yeah. about 30 or 40 shirts that are brand new, never worn. Right. I got rakes. some rakes. Yeah. I got, uh, I don't know, I don't know maybe, I got maybe 30 or 40 bags, but they'll bring a couple hundred. Oh, yeah, they'll them. replenish all that. Lowe's is awesome, man. They are. As opposed to Home Depot, but we won't get into that right now. Okay. All right. Uh, let me mention that this is the last month for the uh, outdoor flea market at the uh, Straight Farmhouse, too. September 13th and September 20th is it for the year. Uh, they start 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Setup begins at 8 a.m., 15 bucks for a 10 by 10 space. Uh, boy, a couple of weeks ago we were over there, and they, they had a real good turnout, real good turnout. Weather was nice. So, yeah, if you're interested, uh, you know, give them a call, Straight Farmhouse. 
Uh, they're located at 6221 Merriman Road. That's between uh, Ford and Warren. Okay? Okie dokie. All right, I want to. I got. I have some other stuff here. All people, right, let's hear. people sent me. <laughs> I have a lunch and learn. Lisa from Maplewood Center sent me um, a lunch and learn. It's going to be at Maplewood in the community lunchroom, and the topic is elder abuse and seniors' rights. Very, very important. Mm-hmm. Very important. Yep. The date is September tenth, so it's right around the corner. The time is twelve fifteen to one fifteen. The speaker is going to be. Um, Dakima Jackson, uh, local long, long-term care ombudsman from the Senior Alliance, uh, also an advocate for loved ones, and um, she is going to be discussing uh, residents' rights in long-term care facilities, how to compare long-term services uh, to fit the needs of the family member, and how to communicate con- communicate concerns. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a, a real important thing. So if you you know, if you suspect elder abuse, uh, get on over there and uh, give it a listen, September 10th. And also note that uh, lunch is not provided, but seniors can purchase a lunch for only $2.25. Or you can bring in a sack lunch. Uh, seniors who wish to eat a hot lunch must make a reservation 24 hours in advance by calling 734-793-1974. The menu for September 10th will be glazed ham, German potato salad, green beans, fresh banana, wheat roll, milk, and cake. So, hey, for $2.25, you can't beat it. All right, this is another important one. Michigan Intergenerational Network is having a um, a seminar on bullying. Um, You know, it's still a problem, bullying. And this... It's all ages now, bullying. It's yeah. not just kids anymore. There was a there was a very recent suicide by a young person just last week. Yeah, that. terrible. Locally. Yeah, September eighteenth, uh, from ten ten to uh, twelve thirty, uh, and it's going to be held at the Village of Westland, three two zero zero one Cherry Hill Road, in Westland. Uh, parking is going to be in the Village of Westland, and a fee will be charged for that. Um, Councilwoman uh, Lisa Hicks Clayton will be there, along with Joanne Darga, Larry Powell, and uh, some guests from the Alzheimer's Association. But uh, it is estimated by many professionals that 10 to 20 percent seniors experience some form of social bullying from peers. Do something.org reported that 17 percent of American students were being bullied in schools. Wow, that's a pretty high number. That is high. Um, Bullying is an intergenerational concern. Researchers are still working on solutions to this comp- complex problems in the pre-K through 12 education system. Uh, snacks will be served. Uh, please inform them of any food allergies. An RSVP is requested to Kay Brown, and you can call her at 586-468-8118. All right, RSVP. Very important, another important seminar. We got all kinds of important stuff. Uh, let's see. Garden City Kiwanis invites you to the Motor City Casino trip. I think they still have seats available. I'm not sure. Uh, if they don't, I apologize. But you can give Party Animal Travel a call at seven three four five two five nine seven seven seven, and uh, it's going to be on Wednesday, September twenty fourth. You pay thirty dollars and you get thirty dollars in slot pay. Free. It's free, man. You're going to leave Garden City Kmart at 8.15. You'll arrive at the casino at 9 a.m., and uh, then the bus will depart the casino at 2 p.m. and return back to Garden City. So give them a call. It's for the Kiwanis. It's a great cause, 734-525-9777. And then I just got this one yesterday. Uh, Garden City gives a boot. Uh, Give a hand up to our local homeless veterans. Uh, donate new or gently used boots, men and women's. Uh, that's going to be held on Saturday, September 27th, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Middle Belt and John Hawk. If you have questions, contact Kelly Bailey at 734-837-7940 or Dave at 734-812-1518. 
Now, donations will benefit the Southeastern Michigan Veterans Stand Down Incorporated. 4vets.org. That's the number four. All donations are tax deductible. So another great cause. And uh, it's not too early, I guess, to talk about Halloween with the fall weather coming. <laughs> Join that's, in the f- that's like a, a minute before winter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Join in the fun. The Halloween party is going to be held Friday, October 24th. Dancing, food, costume contest, and more at the Maplewood Community Lunchroom from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Tickets on sale now. Space is limited. Call 734-793-1856 for more information. I don't have the price. I apologize. I think it's I think it's like eight bucks or something. I think, but don't quote me. Give them a call first. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Anything else you want to cover? Hey, we Not talked a little bit about this last week with um, David. I, I know you you had gone with him too to the reinventing of Inkster. Yeah. You want to comment on that? He says, you know, it's a shame. People, there's a lot of people that care about that yeah. community. It, it's just they really a, are. It's just a a question of moving it forward and people yeah. working together. So he and I attended along with I'm going to say 40, perhaps 50 other people mm-hmm. attended the kickoff event, so to speak, for an intense three-day evaluation recommendation period. Uh, Unfortunately, that's the only event uh, during those three days that I could attend was the first one. So I don't know the final recommendations. But Uh what they were suggesting is, you know, let's look at where we need some um, emphasis. Let's look at what our strengths are. Let's look at how we market. Let's look long-term, which was interesting because... Some of the suggestions that they're making, they acknowledge, you know, if the leaders of the community decide this is the direction they want to go, it may be three decades before you see the the real results. But there are other things that you can do right now. Yeah. So it was a good session. I did ask for the final document to be emailed so that I could have a look at what they ended up with. I haven't received that yet. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, when you do it... uh Bring it on the whenever we get back. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like to I, kick I'd like that to talk around. About that because now I would imagine they're invited to this Western Wayne County Conference, right? Banquet. They're, they're part of Western Wayne. Yes. Somebody should be there representing them. I mean, you know, David said they got a lot of property available in Inkster. They and, do. You know, with Michigan, with right the proximity there. to the airport. Oh my gosh! There's a lot of things going for that town. It, but if they play it right, is working against it, and you know. The perfect storm involves things like funding drying up and, mm-hmm. you know, maybe not paying as much attention to one thing as another. Uh, you know, a lot of difficult choices have been made, and mm-hmm. uh, timing is everything. But, again, there are there are strengths. And having yeah. Michigan Avenue frontage is oh a big deal. Oh, my gosh. It's huge. If you look on literally both sides uh-huh. of Inkster, yeah. where you have Dearborn Heights, than Dearborn, where yeah. you have Westland, then Wayne. Mm-hmm. You see that Dearborn Heights has, you know, they've, they've made several improvements there. And mm-hmm. then in Dearborn, it's very intense. It's an actual real downtown. Yeah, Westland has made some very minor for its half mile. We only have a half mile there. Right. Uh, but Wayne, Wayne, very intense oh, downtown. Oh, very, very intense. So there's an opportunity there. Oh, absolutely. And you, you know, just need the right, the guidance. I don't know what it is, yeah. but. Like you said, you know, all, everybody's got to come together. You can't have forces working against each Part other of it, like that. Uh, you know, I, I've long... Is not, it a power you know, thing I've, or what? I've, I've maintained forever. If you don't have public safety, yeah, the rest of it goes by the wayside. Oh, you got to. You got and to. public safety has suffered there, whether people would wish to... Well, that's a real deterrent for, for companies, I'm sure, to come in with the crime. It could be. Yeah. I know the owner of Livernois uh, Motorsports Engineering... Mm-hmm. Uh, Norma Wallace. I've known Norma a long time. Uh, her father started Livernois, um, the second largest property owner in Dearborn, wow. only the Ford Motor Company. Really? And uh, they have several brand new buildings they've constructed in Inkster. Part of the reason they did was because Norma says that Inkster was very willing to work with them uh-huh. regarding zoning, regarding 
um, you know, getting things done today instead of two weeks from now, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And she would tell you that they're very pleased with their relationship. They've mm -hmm. offered jobs, you know, in, in Inkster. Right, the Inkster right. City Hall is immediately adjacent to one of the Livernois buildings. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, yeah. so yeah, know, there, are, new. there are things that can be improved. There's a lot of uh, things that have been improved. Public safety is That's probably one, one of the things that you can point to over the last, I'm going to say, 10 years, That's although it's problem. much less than that. Yeah. And say, they have a new uh, chief, a female chief, I yeah. heard. Yeah, yeah, Vicky, um, Vicky Yost. Uh, Vicky is a retired Detroit commander. Okay. Um, so, you know, my yeah. hope is that there is a renewed emphasis. Not that there was ever a, a de-emphasis, but I, I think that what happened is that they were faced with with financial challenge. Yeah. And had to make some cuts. Yeah. And certain other things that they wanted just didn't happen. Yeah. And so. Once, I agree, though. Once, I think public safety is number yeah, one. Yeah, it really is. is. It is. If you uh, you know, it's that broken window theory. If you get a broken window, fix it, and then find out who broke it and, and fix that, too. Yeah. If the window stays broken, it leads to another broken window. Yep. And then before you know it, you got a whole bunch of broken windows. Got to nip it in the bud early. And that doesn't, that's not good for anybody. No, no. Any community. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you're at. All right. Well, I just thought I'd bring that up because yeah. we had talked about it, and I knew you were there, too. Just yeah. wanted your opinion on that. All right. Well, we're five minutes over an hour, so uh, I think we're going to wrap this up pretty soon. Hey, the next city council meeting is going to be September 8th. Boy, I am missing a lot of stuff when we're off, too. 7 p.m. Yeah, at still have great weather in the 40s. <laughs> yeah. At City Hall, 6000 Middle Belt Road. Council urges all residents to attend. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> I don't want your threads. <laughs> Thanks. I'll treasure that. Not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, remember, our shows are always recorded, and you can find them on our uh, main show page over at TalkShoe.com. Search for show ID 82757, and all 215 shows will be over there for you to check out at your convenience. And then, as always, we will upload our latest show when it's available. Shortly after we sign off here uh, on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash GC chat. And for those of you that would like to put a face with a voice, we are videotaping tonight's show and they can all be found on YouTube on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash community chat show. Once it's made available, it will be there. So no matter what, we have you covered. You won't miss a thing. And we thank you all for listening and your support. Yeah, the numbers have looked really good. Our audience is building. It really, really is. Good. Uh, let's say, okay, we are looking for new guests to have on the show starting uh, when we get back. If you're interested in coming on the show and sharing your story or maybe you provide a service uh, you'd like to share with the surrounding communities, then now is the time to contact us so we can get you scheduled at gccommunitychat at gmail.com. Um, yeah, I like your idea. Which? For when we come back. Oh, staff. Get somebody uh, from your staff and yeah. David's staff yep. and, and walk us through what happens when a phone call comes in yep. or a complaint. Or... Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay. I'll leave that up to you. All right. Okay. I think that's it. Uh, hey, what do I say? Well, I think we're Let's ready to call, call this a podcast. podcast. <laughs> I want to thank everyone that participated in tonight's show. A special thanks to my co-host, Richard LeBlanc, and Dapper uh, Tom Iwinski, and um, Joey and Holly with uh, their gardening tips. We always appreciate that. And thanks to everyone who hung out in the chat room with us. We appreciate your support every week. Remember, for the last uh, latest weather info, go to DopplerTomsWeather.com. It's a great website, a lot of information. Also, if you have a show idea or a guest you'd like us to try and get on, just send us an email right now at gccommunitychat at gmail.com. We'll do our best to provide that for you. Don't forget to join our mailing list, too, at gccommunitychat at gmail.com. Remember, we'll be off until September 25th now when we'll be back with all new shows for you. We're going to uh, take some time off, recharge a little bit, uh, make the wife happy because, you know, happy wife, happy life, right, Richard? What they say. 
We're always happy, though, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, also, head on over to our main show page at TalkShoe.com slash TC slash 82757 and get caught up on any past shows you might uh, have missed. We appreciate it. So um, we hope you all enjoyed tonight's show. Remember, the success of a community depends on the community, so please support your local businesses. And also, if you see something, say something. Look out for one another out there. And if you haven't watched us on our YouTube channel yet, you can find us over on youtube.com slash community chat show. Don't forget to subscribe also while you're there because that way uh, you'll be notified when we post a new one. So on behalf of Richard, Tom, and Mike, oh, not Mike, I'm sorry. Mike, wherever you no are. No show. <laughs> no show. His pay is getting docked. <laughs> This is Carrie. Thanks for listening, and we will see you right back here on September 25th. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Call recording has been completed.